This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Shall we pray? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear God, our Father, our Creator, our Sustainer, the Lover of Souls, the God of all mercies, the God of compassion, the God who gives to us more than we de truly deserve. This morning, Almighty God, we assemble in our different places to worship you, to acknowledge you as the only wise God, to thank you, Almighty God, that you know our names, to thank you, Almighty God, that you care for us and that there is nothing that can happen to us or is happening to us or will happen to us that you do not know about because you are the God, Almighty God, who is omniscient. And so we bless you, we honor you, we adore you, we worship you, Almighty God. Help us, Almighty God, to drop the self so that we may see you in all your beauty. Lord God, you know, as we come this time, that there's so much happening in our lives and around us. But help us, Almighty God, not to give in to the doubts and fears and the anxieties, but to look to the one who is able and capable and available to see us through. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Our opening hymn is Oh, praise ye the Lord.
Today is the fourth Sunday after the Epiphany. So we use the propers for that today. Nation shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. I will give you as a light to the nations that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. O oh God, open our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. Glory to God, source of all being, incarnate word and Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it's now and will be forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in life eternal. The Lord has shown forth his glory. Come, let us adore him. The Vanity, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God. We are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The psalm for today is Psalm 111. Hallelujah. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright in the congregation. Great are the deeds of the Lord. They are studied by all. Yeah, let me see this. 
18, the, a song to the Lamb. Splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord our God. For you created everything that is, and by your will they were created and have their being. And yours by right, O Lamb that was slain. For with your blood you have redeemed for God from every family, language, people, and nation, a kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so, to him who sits upon the throne, to Christ the Lamb, be worship and praise, dominion and splendor, forever and forevermore. The second reading from the Word of God is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 1 through 13. Now concerning food, the sacrifice to idols, we know that all of us possess knowledge. Knowledge of self, but love builds up. Anyone who claims to know something does not yet have the necessary knowledge, but anyone who loves God is known by him. Hence, as I said, the eating of food offered to idols, we know that no idol in the world worthy really exists, and that there is no God but one. Indeed, even though there may be so called gods in heaven or on earth, as in fact there are many gods in many ways. Yet for us there is one God, the Father, from whom are all things and for whom we exist, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom are all things and through whom we exist. It is not everyone, however, who has this knowledge. Since some have become so accustomed to others until now, they still think of the food they eat as food offered to an idol. And their conscience, being weak, is the fault. Food will not bring us close to God. We are no worse off if we do not eat, and no better off if we do. But take care that this liberty of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For if others see you, who possess knowledge, eating in the temple of an island, might they not, since their conscience is weak, be encouraged to the point of eating food to sacrifice. So by your knowledge, those weak believers for whom Christ died are destroyed. But when you are the sin against members of your family, and whom their conscious mind is weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food is a cause of their family, I will never eat meat, so that I may not cause one of them to fail. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The hymn for the the hymn is Thou whose almighty word
I'm reading from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, beginning at the 21st verse through to 20, the 28th verse. Jesus and his disciples went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. And he cried out, what have we to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit convulsing him and crying with a loud voice came out of him. And they were amazed and they kept on asking one another, what is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits and they obey him. At once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding regions of Galilee, the gospel of the Lord. And may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. We are in the, still in the season of the epiphany, the manifestation of Jesus Christ to the whole world, the Savior, the Messiah, who, has, who, who came and has come and is still here to draw us to himself and to make us more aware with the knowledge that salvation has already been wrought for us through the shedding of his blood and that he's here for all people. And so in this season of the, of the epiphany, we are called, my brothers and sisters, to continue to expect more from God, more re revelation. And how do we get this revelation? Through knowledge of God, by reading through the scriptures. Now let me hasten to say, we cannot and will never comprehend the fullness of God's person, the person of God. Because if we were to do that, brothers and sisters in Christ, then God would not be God. But he has revealed, and God wants to reveal so much more to us in our pilgrimage as we walk in this time of trepidation and on the in uncertainties of life. But we have to put ourselves where we gain this, where we experience more of God's teachings to us, more of God's exhortations, more of God's compassion, and recognizing in all of this that one day we have to give an account to the Almighty God because he created us. And so he is the one who has equipped us and is equipping us and will equip us and has given us gifts and talents for us to use not for our own use, but for the building up of the body of Christ. And so we find in the readings, we have all of this, the, the readings as all the readings in the Bible that pull us to the awareness that we need to get closer and closer to God. In the Old Testament lesson for today, written in Deuteronomy chapter 18, we find Moses, that he was prepared, preparing himself to hand over the baton. Remember Moses, who led the children of Israel, the prophet who God called, the, prophet, the, the man who said to God, Lord, you know I can't, I can't speak, I can't, I can't, 
And God told him, yes, you can, because I will be with you. And Moses, in all of his journey with God, was an intercessor to God on behalf of the children of Israel. He was there, he, he asked God to have mercy on them. And there were times when Moses even became frustrated with the behaviors of the Israelites as they were going through the wilderness. And we know that Moses was not given the opportunity to go into the promised land, but he was able to see the promised land. And so on the brink of his passing up the, the baton, he's now speaking to the children of Israel on behalf of God. Because the prophet is one who speaks on behalf of the living God, the true prophet. And so Moses said to the children of Israel, you know, because he told them he was no longer, he was not going over. And so he's saying to them, he's exhorting them. He says, God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. So God is not going to leave you comfortless or guideless. He's going to be there. He's going to be telling the prophet what to say, when to say it. And so Moses tell them that he's going to fulfill that your request. If you remember when Moses was on Mount Sinai, when he had gone for the commandments, that the children of Israel thought he was up there too long. So what they did, they persuaded the, the priest Aaron to build them a, 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 an object to worship. So we know about the golden calf. And so when God became angry with them, God became angry and Moses was saying to God, don't destroy them, he'll get down there. And so they said, oh, don't, don't let God speak to us because if God ever speaks to us, we're going to be destroyed, we're going to, where our lives will end. So then in this segment, Moses says, as per your request, that God will raise up someone else to speak because you fear the voice of God. And he says in raising up that prophet, that prophet must speak only what I say and not what that prophet feels is appropriate for the time. And any prophet who does not speak on my behalf shall die. And we're living in a time, and if you go through history, the Old Testament, you find that there were false prophets. And today they are false prophets. Prophets who give us a word of comfort when we are in when we are living in sin and doing what is wrong. They give us a word of comfort and say, Well, God, you know, God is so compassionate. God will not call you into accountability because you have you have not prayed or you have you have you have done evil, you have denounced him, you have walked away from him. And so they give these words of comfort. And so people are led to believe that these prophets, because they do not exhort as though God has called them to say, that if you walk in sin and live in sin and do not repent, you will die, then they feel quite comfortable. And we see it. We see what is happening because the enemy is very busy. The devil is very busy. And in, if you don't remember if in, in First Kings, when the prophet Micah, in Jerem the prophet Micah had told the people, he did not give the words of God, but the prophet Micah at one point was giving the king a word that the Lord did not give. In Jeremiah's time, when Jeremiah went into the temple and told the king that he was doing wrong, the prophet there was upset and said that could not be true. God is not going to destroy you because you're doing wrong. And so they had a sense of comfortableness in sin. And so we are told, my brothers and sisters, that we have to pray to God 
for a spirit of discernment that we can know when it's God speaking and when God doesn't speak because the devil knows the word. The devil knows the word of God. The devil knows the power of God. In the gospel for today, written in Mark's gospel chapter 1, the beginning at the 21st verse, we are told that Jesus and his disciples had gone up into Capernaum on the Sabbath day. They, they went in the temple and Jesus taught them. Now, if you recognize or if you have been following the gospel, if you have, you have heard the stories and read the accounts over and over and listened, that the Jews didn't accept Jesus Christ as the Messiah. They saw him as just one of us, an ordinary person. Remember that Jesus was both God and human. And so they did not accept Jesus Christ as the Messiah of God. They, 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 they denounced him and they were very critical. And when you read the Gospels, you'd find that they were always listening. Majority of them, one in two, had to, to hide or to, 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 to really truly believe or to ask Jesus a question without their fellow Jews knowing because they did not see him as the Messiah. So he taught. And remember too, one of the things why the Jews did not like Jesus was is that he said, if I hadn't come, then you would not, you would continue in your self-aggrandization, pointing to yourself. Your worship was not going anywhere while you were commanding others to do that which you were not doing. You see, what happened is that the love of God was lacking in their proclamation of the, of the commands of God, or of the scriptures, the Torah, or stroke Pentateuch. They, they were about themselves, the rabbis, the, the, the scribes, the Pharisees. It was all about me and myself and what I have. And so Jesus says, if I hadn't come that, and, and taken off the cloak, you would not have hated me. And so that while he was in the synagogue teaching, something happened. We're told that a man with an unclean spirit, meaning he was demon possessed. And as Jesus was teaching with authority, and just to say before I get back there, is that the people recognized that there was something different from what they were accustomed to when the teaching of the scribes and the Pharisees. There was something that caused them to stop and to think and to realize that there was a newness, there was a freshness. There was something that they need to get to understand more and they wanted to hear more. And right in the midst of that teaching, this man appeared and he came in and he came in and they shouted out to Jesus, the unclean spirit shouted out, what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? The devil knows God. Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. And so we are told that Jesus rebuked him, saying, be silent and come out. And we are told that the unclean spirit convulsed in him cried out that came out in a loud voice. So now that the, the prophets who do not denounce evil and keep God's people in comfortness of sin is only yielding to the demonic force. And when you read the book of Ephesians chapter 6, Verse 10 following, we're told that our fight is not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual wickedness in high places. So that the devil, remember what the devil has done. Even when we get into the season of Lent, we find out that as Jesus was in the wilderness, how the devil appeared to try to dissuade Jesus from following God's command. The devil, the false prophet, was trying to, to, to 
infiltrate the mind of Jesus that was vulnerable after 40 days of fasting. And Jesus had to rebuke him. And so there are so many unclean spirits around, floating around, brothers and sisters in Christ, that we have to be careful as to what we listen to, what we, what we, what we, what we grasp from it, what we allow to cultivate in our heart. Because Jesus warned us, he says, listen, the devil is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. So when they recognized Jesus, they knew exactly that before God, evil cannot exist. And so they wanted Jesus to leave them alone. And if you recall the account of, the, remember that man, that Jesus that lived amongst the tomb? That man who lived amongst the tomb. And when Jesus asked, what's your name? And he says, we're Le I'm legion. And, 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 and Jesus commanded the evil spirit. And they said, can we get in those pigs? And he allowed them to go. The devil knows Jesus. And my question to you and to myself, how much do we know God? How much do we know the power and the authority of Jesus Christ? Are we so, so, so weak in our spirits that we will take anything that comes that sounds good. We look around in the world today, all these false teachings, these, 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 these groups that are being formed based on what they are told, even in the church, they are told and so they will fight for that which is not true because their minds have been taken over by evil. And so the unclean spirits, my brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ has the authority over them. And he has the authority that he has given to us too for, we, for us to denounce the evil ways and practices that would push us away from him. So when the unclean spirit came out, then again the people were amazed. They've never seen that happen. They've never seen an exorcism that has taken place. And they said, with what teaching and authority he commands even the unclean spirits and they obey him. So brothers and sisters, we do not serve a God who is incapable. We serve a God with authority. He has authority over life and the grave. He died and rose from the dead and ascended so that we may have life. We serve a God who is, who is alive and well. Those who listen to the theories of confusion and chaos and, and worship the, the, the idols of self or the material things or worship the theories and they go around and they see themselves as one having something that is truthful in quotation mark. They are losing the way. And this is why as Christians, we have to make sure that we build our truth. Jesus Christ says in John's gospel chapter 14, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to me, comes to the Father except through me. Jesus has come. And so my brothers and sisters, there's no other way to salvation but through Jesus Christ. The wealth, the theories, and you know the sad thing is that when the when the enemy puts false teachings and co over and quotes them, quote them, you know, with something that makes them smell and look good, and Christians we walk into it and we keep walking into it and going to our death, and when the Spirit of God when the prophets of God come to call us out, we say, no, they are the false prophets because they are saying that I must change my way, that I must not listen to these false prophets, that I must not, I must not build up my teaching that we, all people are not equal. You know, in churches, and when I talk about churches, I'm not talking about denominations. I'm talking about the body of Christ. 
there are church members who believe in segregation. There are church members who believe that people of African descent, dark-skinned people, are not loved by God, that we are evil in the church. And so we have to realize that the devil is a liar. Jesus told one of told the, the, the scribes and the Pharisees at one point, he says, listen, you believe in the father of lies. And that's exactly what is happening. And that's why the church, we have to be constantly sitting before God, listening to him. And as I said earlier, pray for the spirit of discernment the spirit of discernment so that we know when it's God and when it's not God. And then the Bible says, listen, if when this false prophet speak and they tell you that God will, will love you even when you do not repent, God, yes, God loves us. And if they say to us, you don't have to repent because God loves you. God cares. You can do whatever you want. You know, you can do whatever. You can live any how you want because there's no accountability. God is not going to punish you if you do not repent. And we believe it. Then he says that we must prove it. If, if that happens, and if, or if they say to us, listen, walk out there without your mask and just go around and cough in people's face and sit and shout, and nothing will happen to you. He says, if that is true, then you know that he's speaking on behalf of God. But if God says, in love, because you love your brothers and sisters as I have loved you, the authority of God brings with it love, compassion, mercy, then if he says that if you truly love, as Paul writes into the people of Corinth, he says, if you truly love, and if you're not puffed up with knowledge, knowledge that is false, then you will truly listen to what God is saying and know the right from wrong. Know that if we do not repent, we're gonna die in our sins. But when we sin and repent and return to God, God in his love and his mercy and compassion forgives. And so Paul writing to the people of Corinth, he says to them, in, because what was happening is that there were new converts into the body of Christ. And they were coming out of a situation where they were idol worshippers. And they were coming into the fellowship of Christ to worship the only God. And so Paul had to say to them, there is no God but one. Indeed, there, yes, they are so-called gods. But, and he says, there are many gods, false gods, who will come with the news, how we just, just be prosperous in the material things, and don't worry about the soul salvation. And do anything you want. You know, commit anything you want, and frame it and boast. But he says, in fact, there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God, for the believer, there is only one God, the Father whom all things and, and for whom we exist, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom all things, through whom are all things and through whom we exist, because we exist. And it, exist means that we have a time limit to be. So we exist. And he's saying to us, there's one God. And then he, there was a, a very delicate situation where, as I said earlier, just now, that the, the, the people in Corinth, those who were coming out of idol worshiping, they were coming into a new, into a new face of life. And so what used to happen for the idol worshipers they would offer sacrifice, just like the children of Israel would offer sacrifice to God. They would offer sacrifice to idols. And the meat 
from the animals who were killed were sold in the marketplace, says, and people would buy them. Christians would buy it, the new converts. And so what Paul is saying to them is that, listen, out of love, out of the love that God has shown you, out of the knowledge, not the puffed up knowledge, but the knowledge that says that whatever I do, I become a stumbling block to others, to push them away from Christ, I'm going to be held accountable. So it says, listen, whilst the meat does not have any power that was offered to the idols, yet for the sake of the new convert whose faith in God is just starting to build. It's like taking a, a young baby, three months, and I'm sure we would not give that baby hard dough bread. Or we would not give that person boiled dumplings. Or we would not give them bo fish with bones because they are just developing. And so we'd have to wait for them to get to a stage in life when they can truly eat that. And so he says, because of the weakness of the faith of the new converts, do not eat the meat that is offered in the temple of idols when it is sold in the marketplaces. He says, listen, whether we eat, he says, but if we, if we eat, we are no worse off. And if we eat not, we are not worse off. But because of love which builds up, he's saying to them, take a stand. Listen to the voice of God. And just not eat that meat that is offered in, this, in, the, in, in the temple. Buy other meats. And in our contemporary time, we can say, because in some, as I said earlier too, in some congregations, they are told not to wear masks and they can sit and clump together, and they can do whatever. And he's saying that, listen, out of love, out of respect for God, love for brothers and sisters, and respect for God, if it means that you have to, even if you have that knowledge that nothing can happen to you, wear the mask for the sake of your brothers and sisters. And we can go on to different issues. Some people dress, how they dress. And he says, listen, while it may not, for, for instance, to wear sleeveless into the house of God, while it, nothing is wrong because it's where your heart is and you're dressed properly, but for the sake of a new convert who might have come in and used to wear nothing, almost nothing, just cover up out of love and he says that this is the struggle as Jesus the new teaching with authority the love in 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 Matthew, in Matthew in John's gospel chapter 13 God says to in verse 35 Jesus said to his disciples love one another as I have loved you love and that's what love does first Corinthians tells us that love is not puffed up. That love is considerate. He says love is patient, love is kind. Love is not boastful or arrogant. So it says to us, brothers and sisters, in all these readings, that the God we serve, the God of authority, the God who loves, the God who has power over the evils of this world, the God who has called us into union with him, that one, we have to learn to discern the voice of God and to know the false prophets, the wolves in sheep clothing. And we have to know that when we pray for a spirit of discernment, the Holy Spirit is there to teach us right from wrong. In Galatians chapter 5, it tells you that the, the fruit of the spirit and the work of the flesh, that they are constant war with each other because each one wants us to do what they want. The Spirit of God wants us to live, but the Spirit of the carnal mind wants us to die. And so the enemy is around. The enemy, we cannot be still, we cannot be silent, we cannot be complacent. We have to be aware, keep alert. In Advent, we were told, be alert. 
be awake. So we have to be awake and be alert because the new teachings of God is just coming and coming and God is doing marvelous things. And so brothers and sisters in Christ, on this day, this day, the fourth Sunday of the Epiphany, as we are preparing in a little while for the Lenten season, let us spend time with God. Let us spend more time in prayer. Let us ask God to strip us of the falseness, of the false theories, the things that teach us that we, are, that, that, that we have seen and na nations of people who are just following false leaders, thinking that they are doing the right and have abandoned the teachings of God. Serious time, brothers and sisters. And this is why God says, I've shortened the days because of the elect. And he has the authority, the power to do that because he wants us to be saved. He wants us to enter into eternal life. He doesn't want us to just pick up on everything we hear because we hear the name of God in it. Everything we, that comes in the name of God most sometimes are not from God. So we pray for that and we, in prayer and fasting as we wait upon God, as we pray one for another, let us remember brothers and sisters in Christ. As the psalmist says, verse 10 of Psalm 101, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Those who act accordingly have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. So I pray as we continue in this journey of life that we will seek God more and trust in God's authority and learn to love one another more and more by what we do, not because we want to prove a point, but because we love God. Amen. Let us affirm our faith in God as we say the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son of the only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. for today. Almighty and everlasting God, 
You govern all things, both in heaven and on earth. Mercifully hear the supplications of your people, and in our time grant us your peace. Through Jesus Christ, O Lord, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And Father, we ask of you this day to help us to walk with you. Help us to thirst and hunger for you more and more. Father God, we pray this morning that you will anoint us, Holy Spirit, that you'll empower us to church, that we may be constant and fervent in what we do for you, that we will seek not our own gratifications, but to seek to bring honor and glory to your holy name. We pray for all peoples in their various callings. We pray for all nations of people. We thank you, dear God, for our children and young people. We ask you that you'll bless them, that you'll cover them and put a hedge of protection around them. We pray for their parents. We pray for the young, immature parents that they will gain wisdom and knowledge. And those who, are, who, are, who, have, who know you, that you'll draw them more and more to yourself. We pray for the sick, those who are critically ill. Father God, sickness is around, but we know that you are the healer. And we pray that you'll anoint every single person from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. And we bring before you those we, we know of and those you know, Almighty God, those known to you, everyone who is known to you. Marion Bryant, Kyle Douglas, Christopher Green, Viola Green, Alison Hodge, Bernard Hughes, William Jackson, Maggie Jones, Marva Laws, Richard Dobbins, Gloria Seely, Mikhail Simon, Philip Simpson, Vilma Simpson, Bernadine Steele, Carl Walters, Thomas Wernham, Irene Williams, Kevin Wint. We bring to you, Almighty God, the families of all those who are, who are sick and hurting at this time. Give them those strengths, give them the assurance, Give them, Almighty God, the emotional strength that they seek to. And bless those, the, the teams who assist you professionally. Give them love and compassion, Lord. And give them the strength that they need to, to meet each task ahead of them. We pray for a just society. We pray for a society where people are recognized as people who are made in the image and likeness of God whether they be poor or they be rich. We pray for the outcasts and the marginalized. We pray, Almighty God, for those who are experiencing hardship in one way or the other. Disasters are, are around us, Lord, and we put our trust in you. We put our hope in you, Almighty God. Father God, we pray this day that you will have mercy on all those in governance around the world, and we bring them to you and we bring the new governance in the United States of America to you. We pray that you'll direct them and that we pray, Almighty God, that they will seek you more and more every day. We pray, Almighty God, for gracious weather. We pray for your continued blessings and we thank you for who you are, Lord. We thank you. Many times we ask of you, but we don't thank you for you who you are, that you're the supreme God, the only God that can truly love us and care for us. So Lord God, have mercy upon us, we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, uh, we have come through yet another week and we give God thanks. While we are thanking God, there are so many persons who have died and we pray for God to, 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 to have mercy upon their souls and to cleanse them and to have and to grant them forgiveness of sins and receive them into his holy peace. And for all those who are grieving, we know that there's so much out there with the new variants that are coming and, and as we think that one is happening, but we know we're not giving up because we serve a God. We serve a God who sits high and looks low, a God who loves, so we thank God. A few notices and I'm hoping that you're taking some time for self-care and reaching out to someone else as the Spirit bids you. And happy birth 
happy birth and wedding anniversary to anyone who is celebrating the last day of January and in the and in the week of February that begins. Bible study is on Wednesday at 7 p.m. on Zoom and the topic this week overview of spiritual disciplines and their importance and the Reverend Canyon Dr. Georgia Jervis will lead. The annual meeting will be held on February 7, 2021 on Zoom. The Ash Wednesday Liturgy will be on Wednesday, February 17, 2021 at 7 p.m. on Zoom. But the liturgy will not have the ashes because of the pandemic. And we thank everyone who has been supporting uh, the mission of St. Francis and St. Martha's Church through your prayers, through your kind uh, um, gifts out of your resources that God has given to you. Through your time offering and tithe, we give God thanks and we pray God will continue to bless. And remember the different ways you can give your offering or you know tithe in the mail or you can drop it off at the church through the mail slot or you can do through Zelle Quick Pay. But I, I hasten to say, make sure you're using the right email of the church which is saints sts francis martha at gmail.com so god and remember we're still collecting items for the Dorcas basket and the more we give is the more god blesses us so take time to recognize god to love god and to know that we have a story to tell to the nations of god's love and god's mercies god
Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and your loved ones, near or far, now and forever. Amen. And remember, God loves you and God cares. Amen. <laughs>